That's it. Is that okay? Yeah, that's fine. Father, as we turn and start to turn to your word, we're reflecting on it today. We just pray that you will speak to us through it. We pray that you'll open our eyes to see and to see you more clearly, love you more dearly, follow you more nearly. And we just think of that cross and all you did. May it impinge on us today. For Jesus' sake. Amen. 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 Today is Friday, in case you haven't noticed. The sixth day of the week. And in Genesis 1, on the sixth day of the week, God created people, humankind. Jesus, and then of course, what did he do? He rested on the seventh. Jesus, on Friday, the sixth day of the week, died on the cross to redeem mankind, following the fall and all that's happened in between. He died to redeem mankind. And then on Saturday, he rested. He rested from all the work he had been doing over the past Three years in ministry, teaching, demonstrating, bringing in the kingdom, etc. He rested. And of course, Sunday is the first day of new creation that's going to lead to a new heaven and a new earth, which is what we're still anticipating. But what we haven't to do, and too many Christians do it, they're too de eager to get from Friday to Sunday. But Friday is so, so, so important. And in one sense, so is Saturday. That rest. The rest from the work. And this morning, I've already alluded to the Old Testament and a lot of us as Christians flee from the Old Testament. Oh dear, it's a bit too difficult. It's a bit too hard. I don't understand it. I don't like it. I understand it is difficult and can be difficult but it's part of the whole picture because God didn't wake up one morning about 2,000 years ago and say son I think we're gonna to have to do something about the mess down there no from Genesis 3 onwards God has a plan and he's slowly but surely moving toward that and there's lots in the Old Testament that is anticipating very specifically, the coming of Jesus, the cross, even the resurrection. And Jesus, of course, sits in the narrative of the Old Testament because what he is doing in the cross and in coming sits into the whole of the Exodus event, which I'm not going this morning. What we are going to do this morning, though, is go to the fourth of four servant songs in the book of Isaiah. And this one is known as the Suffering Servant. We're going to read all of it. It's in two parts in one sense, in chapter 52 and on into chapter 53. Um, and we're going to reflect then on a few verses. But as we read, I want you to spot the following uh, in this passage. Because, as I say, I'm only going to focus on a few verses in what I say. Those that pertain most closely to the cross. And yes, we see this pro passage as prophecy. Now, when Isaiah gave this prophecy, 700 or so years before Jesus, he would be looking into his world, speaking and giving a message under the power of the God's Holy Spirit, which he may or may not have understood at all in terms of anything in the future. But that is part of the dynamic of prophecy. It speaks into a situation, but stretches out and beyond in many, many different ways. So we see it as a prophecy about Jesus. It's 700 years before Jesus is conceived. So he's, we're talking here of an unknown figure, but it is the eternal son who becomes known as Jesus. And it is about his ministry. You'll see some of that. And the cross 
and the resurrection. The latter bit is a little difficult. So 52, 12 and 13 are a kind of summary and introduction to 53, 1 to 12. So the things I'd like you to, as it's being read, spot are the following. The picture of Jesus, what he does, what is done to him, people's reaction to him, the work of, the, of, of suffering, which is the cross, and the outcome of it all, which is a bit difficult in the Hebrew text and the Greek text, and in the English text it's a difficult one to translate, uh, but there's that real sense of hope of something beyond the suffering of the servant. So, I would like it read, we'll have it in French first, please. Mon serviteur réussira et grandira et gagnera en importance, il sera très haut placé. Tout comme beaucoup ont été horrifiés en le voyant, tant, tant son visage était défiguré, tant son aspect était différent de celui des humains. Il purifiera beaucoup de nations, devant lui des rois fermeront la bouche, car ils verront ce qu'on ne leur avait pas raconté. Ils comprendront ce dont ils, ils n'avaient pas entendu parler. Qui a cru à notre prédiction, prédication qui, qui le bras de l'Éternel a-t-il été révélé Il a grand devant lui comme une jeune plante, comme un rejeton qui sort d'une terre toute sèche. Il n'avait ni beauté, ni splendeur propre à attirer nos regards, et son aspect n'avait pas rien pour nous plaire. Méprisé et délaissé par les hommes, hommes de douleur, habitués à la souffrance, Il était pareil à celui face auquel on détourne la tête. Nous l'avons méprisé, nous n'avons fait aucun cas de lui. Pourtant, ce sont nos souffrances qu'il a portées, c'est de nos douleurs qu'il est changé, qu'il s'est changé, et nous, nous l'avons considéré comme puni, frappé par Dieu, humilié. And uh, shall we give Pascal a rest? This is a very long passage. Mais lui, Thank il you, était blessé à cause de nos transgressions, brisé à cause de nos fautes. La punition qui nous donne la paix est tombée sur lui. Et c'est par ses blessures que nous sommes guéris. Nous étions tous comme des brebis égarés. Chacun suivait sa propre voie. Et l'Éternel a fait retomber sur lui nos fautes à tous. Il a été maltraité, il s'est humilié, il n'a pas ouvert la bouche. Pareil à un agneau qu'on mène à l'abattoir, à une brebis muette devant ceux qui la tondent, il n'a pas ouvert la bouche. Il a été enlevé sous la contrainte et sous le jugement, et dans sa génération qui s'est inquiétée de son sort. Qui s'est soucié de ce qui était, de ce qu'il était exclu de la terre des vivants, frappé à cause de la révolte de mon peuple. On a mis son tombeau parmi les méchants, sa tombe avec le riche. Alors qu'il n'avait pas commis de violence et qu'il n'y avait pas eu de tromperie dans sa bouche, l'Éternel a voulu le briser par la souffrance. Si tu fais de sa vie un sacrifice de culpabilité, il verra une descendance et vivra longtemps. Et la volonté de l'Éternel sera accomplie par son intermédiaire. Thank you, Pascal and Nikki. Go back and do that in English, please. Two volunteers. It is a long reading and it's a difficult reading. <coughs> Thank See you. my servant, oh. will act what? That right? That's all right, yeah. See my servant, will act wisely, for he will be raised and lifted up and highly exalted. Just as there were many who were appalled at him, his appearance was so disfigured beyond that of any human being, and his form marred beyond human likeness. So he will spring, sprinkle many servants, nations and kings will shut their mouths. Because of him, <coughs> what they were not told, they will see, and what they have not heard, they will understand. Who has believed our message, and to whom has the arm of the Lord been revealed? He grew up before him like a tender shoot, and like a root out of dry ground. 
He had no beauty or majesty to attract us to him, nothing in his appearance that we should desire him. He was despised and rejected by mankind, a man of suffering and familiar with pain. Like one from whom people hide their faces, he was despised and we held him in low esteem. Surely he took up our pain and bore our suffering, yet we considered him punished by God, stricken by him and afflicted. Steve, you were <clears throat> volunteering before. But he was pierced for our transgressions, he was crushed for our iniquities. The punishment that brought us peace was on him, and by his wounds we are healed. We all, like sheep, have gone astray. Each of us has turned to our own way, and the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. He was oppressed and afflicted, yet he did not open his mouth. He was led like a lamb to the slaughter, and as a sheep before its shearers is silent, so he did not open his mouth. By oppression and judgment he was taken away, yet who of his generation protested? For he was cut off from the land of the living. For the transgression of my people he was punished. He was assigned a grave with the wicked and with the rich in his death. Though he had done no violence, nor was any deceit in his mouth. Yet it was the Lord's will to crush him and cause him to suffer. And though the Lord makes his life an offering for sin, he will see his offspring and prolong his days. And the will of the Lord will prosper in his hand. After he has suffered, he will see the light of life and be satisfied. By his knowledge, my righteous servant will justify many, and he will bear their iniquities. Therefore I will give him a portion among the great, and he will divide the spoils with the strong, because he poured out his life unto death, and was numbered with the transgressors. For he bore the sin of many, and made intercession for the transgressors. Thank you, Dave and Steve. As I said earlier, Good Friday, and my focus is going to be on the cross. There's a lot in that passage. It's a difficult passage to preach on. Um, I certainly find it. I don't know whether you would as well. You might find it a bit easy, but it's a, a tough, tough passage. Um, and those last verses, uh, there is that glimpse and that feel of something beyond the grave. And we leave it there for now because we don't dash to Sunday. And I'm going to be focusing on verses four to six. And I'm going to suggest that uh, verse 10 is a summary and a link to the cross. And I've got three headings this morning. Whoops, that'll do, that's gone. I'm going to look at those verses and you'll see I've put some colours on there. Um, and I'm glad I printed it out for myself because I can see it a bit better. Three headings are going to be what he did, how he did it, and the summary and link to the cross. Oh, the resurrection, sorry, the resurrection. So what he did, you'll see there that the servant is highlighted in red. Our we, when it's referring to us, is in blue. And references to God or the Lord. And there's an... I'm just checking this here because the light's not very good. Uh, in green. So verses 4 to 6, what he did. And what I want us to do is just look at the flow of these verses and reflect on them. Surely he, this is the servant, <coughs> took our pain, bore our suffering. And the reality comes with Jesus as he's doing all of that in his ministry and going toward the cross. People saw him, we considered, him, the servant, punished by God. They thought on Good Friday they were doing God's will. For their own ends, of course, as we've reflected before. You know, power position and the comfy situation with Rome and the temple, the status quo, mattered all too much to the religious leaders of his day. But they considered him being punished by God, stricken by him and afflicted. And some of us watched The Passion of the Christ yesterday, Mel Gibson's film. And it brings out, amongst other things, the absolute utter despise from the 
religious leaders and those in authority, how he's abused and mistreated. Uh, but also it brought, and I, I reflected this afterwards, it took us actually into the crowds as well. We were there in a sense, even though I think the film has got some a particular slant to it, but that doesn't matter. It takes you there and puts you into what's happening. And Derek will be coming to that. Did you know you've got two sermons, by the way, this morning? Just Mine will be much shorter. <laughs> <laughs> Set up for me? <laughs> we'll see. We'll see. I've not finished yet. I know. <laughs> <laughs> Stricken by God and afflicted. They thought they were doing God's will. But of course, we were all complicit in it because of sin and the fall or the fall and sin. It's our sins that nailed him to that cross. But he was pierced, verse 5. He, the servant, was pierced for our transgressions. He'd done nothing wrong. The only perfect man ever. And he takes our sin, our transgressions, crushed, crushed. And he was, I don't think we realise. And again, that film brings out how Jesus really was crushed for our iniquities. And he was punished. But his punishment brings us peace. Peace in terms of reconciliation with the Father. And by his wounds we are healed. Our wholeness, our lives, our freedom flow from his wounds because he has bore in our body our transgressions. He's been pierced. It's by his stripes we are healed. And we? Well, we're just like sheep. And Jesus liked that picture, didn't he? The one that went astray um, and the finding and talking about the good shepherd because it's a, a picture in the Old Testament. We'd gone astray, turned to our own ways. But the Lord laid on him the iniquity of us all. He was oppressed. Oh, I've moved on, hasn't that? Whoops. How he did it, sorry. Yeah, no, that's all right. How he did it, verse 7. He was all in red there. He, he, his, he, he, he. He was oppressed and afflicted. He didn't open his mouth, like a lamb to the slaughter. And as a sheep before his shearers is silent, so he did not open his mouth. Jesus did not protest. Oh yes, he prayed in Gethsemane. And it was painful prayer. And it was a battle. And we thought a couple of weeks ago, that there at Lazarus's tomb, he's perhaps anticipating something of that's to come as he raises Lazarus. And he gets in a, a, an emotional state himself. But he went willingly to the cross because he loves you and me. And then when we look at verse 10, we have a summary and a link. It's a summary, uh, there's a summary of his suffering in the first part of verse 10. And let's remember John 3.16, that it's the Lord's will. God so loved the world that he gave. And it's not the end either in that verse, second half of it. If I can see, oh, yes, he will see his offspring. That's the hint of something to come. It's not the end. For God so loved the world, he gave his only son, that whoever believes will not perish. And it's just lying, be this lies behind that altogether. What Jesus did was global and personal. That comes out in John 3.16. And it demands a personal response. Whoever believes. We've got to respond to what God is doing. One of the problems in the Old Testament, people didn't respond to him as they should. They just played around with him like a toy or a talisman. Rather than worshipping him fully with their hearts and lives that's what we're called to in repentance and faith and we need to do it with deep and thankfulness and appreciation amen